Hey guys, I wanna welcome you back to week 20 weight loss. Now I've been doing carnivore, ketosis, all kinds of different stuff to lose weight. I've lost a dramatic amount of weight in a short amount of time and not every week's gonna be perfect. But the biggest thing I wanted to do is I wanted to reach out to all those morbidly obese people out there, the ones that are struggling, the ones that might be stuck in bed, sitting in a wheelchair, uh, just not able to move around like they really want to. I wanna give those people hope. That is the whole purpose of my journey here and probably most likely my mission statement is to give people hope. That's all I wanna do. Because throughout this process, I found that losing weight isn't really that hard. I've just been using a series of fastings. It's not starving, I'm still able to eat. Um, I've been practicing all types of different techniques since I got started. So once I got rid of the cravings for carbs and sugars and stuff like that, everything was a breeze after that. And that's been the best part about this whole journey. So it took me about a month to get over those cravings. And my little show cat here. She wants to show you how pretty she is. So we're gonna let her get in on the film for a second. And then she's usually just gonna walk off and do cat stuff, which is like knock over stuff. But in the meantime, while I was getting ready to make this video, I started another video on a couple different topics. Uh, one is to uh, the food I'm making behind me. Uh, I got a little thing going on in the crock pot. I decided to try to make a carnivore uh, type meal for the weekend. Now it's gonna be debatable, so we'll see how that goes. And we'll also see how that works overall with the uh, weight loss routine. So as always in the beginning, I'm just gonna like to jump right on into what my weight loss was for this week, or if I didn't lose any weight at all. Get that part out of the way, and then we'll start talking about other topics. Okay guys, like every single morning, I get up in the morning, go to the bathroom. That's the first thing I do. My cat gets me up out of bed. Uh, we head on over to the scale and Today is a little slower than others. Cat doesn't really want to lead the way like normal. But anyways, we're just gonna head on into the living room, get this scale set up and ready to go and see what my weight is for the week. Now I do not have high hopes because this week was a really troublesome week. Um, if you were around for last weekend's video, I did try to completely kick out nicotine, but we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Let's see. So. My weight loss for this week, we're gonna call it 327.5. Now that is not perfect. So let's see here. 327.5 minus last week's weight. Ooh, it says, uh, well actually I gained about 3.4 pounds this week. Now there's a reason for that. A lot of that had to do with me trying to kick nicotine out of my body cold turkey, right in the middle of trying to lose weight. Maybe not such a great idea. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, some other things did happen that kind of revolve around that door there. Some embarrassing things and some things I might have to apologize for here in just a little bit. But we'll, we'll get back into that. So the overall weight loss, uh, my starting weight was 435 pounds when I started this weight loss journey 20 weeks ago. Uh, so 327.5 pounds, that puts me down Technically 107.5 pounds, which is actually a weight gain from last week. So yeah, we're doing the whole up and down thing. And I think that's pretty normal right now, so to speak. Because yeah, after all, like I said, I, I quit smoking and I quit vaping cold turkey. Big mistake. And I realized that less than a week into that, I was struggling so hard. I was talking to everybody, trying to get just some help. Uh, I did make kind of a Mayday video and that that didn't go so well because I was extremely stressed. The video wasn't well made. Um, so I, I pretty much just, just put it on private just to, just to keep it off there. It was, it was rather pathetic in my opinion. But anyhow, back to the quitting smoking and quitting vaping all at the same time. Now, we have several options to choose to try to quit smoking. And the majority of those options include nicotine. Well, when you're trying to quit any substance, it's really hard to quit cold turkey. We all know that. Many of us at my age, and I'm getting close to 50 years old, we tend to, you know, go back and forth with this whole dilemma of quitting smoking. You know, we, we start quitting smoking and then we go back to smoking and then we quit smoking. And some of us quit smoking for over a year at times. And that's extremely annoying. But all the remedies like the hospitals give us, it's all these different types of levels of nicotine. The patches, in my opinion, are too much nicotine, and the chewing gum just doesn't work. It tastes disgusting, and it just doesn't work for me. 
Now they do sell these uh, little pouches that go on your lip. You, you don't even have to spit. And you know, they're, they're not really like chewing tobacco pouches. They're just, they're called Zin, I believe, but they're just like white pouches that you put in your lip and it gives you a little, a little nicotine jump. Now I've tried those, didn't work for me. Uh, I've tried the patches, patches didn't work for me. Uh, so far, the only thing that keeps me away from tobacco and just cigarettes in general is this stupid thing right here. Now there's a story behind this stupid thing right here. And that is, I threw this in the garbage last Tuesday. That was special. Yeah, this went in the garbage. All the batteries went in the garbage. Uh, the cigarettes I had at the moment, they went in the garbage. The wife pretty much beat the cigarettes right out of me. She's like, no, you will not smoke cigarettes again. You've come this far with your weight loss. She just won't have it. So she's a huge supporter in everything I'm doing. Um, she's kind of silent in the whole process right now. And she's got her own thing going on. She's trying to get back into shape herself. She's really not that far out of shape and she can run a mile in like 10 or 12 minutes. It's pretty, it's pretty remarkable. She's always been a good runner, uh, even from me at times. She just runs away, but <laughs> that's what little tiny native women do. They're short and they move really fast, especially in Walmart. So anyhow, let's get back to the topic of this stupid thing being in the trash. Well, I threw this thing away uh, last Tuesday, no, last Wednesday, and that's the day of trash day. So when I got home from work, I threw this thing in the garbage. Uh, it was in the trash bag at the very bottom of the can. So it was the first bag in the can for the week. So it got covered with all kinds of fun stuff like coffee grounds, eggshells, you name it. But anyhow, yeah. So I went throughout the week. I cried for help. I, you know, people can only do so much to help you. They can only give you so much advice. And they're like, well, just, just keep plugging along, man. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And it never, never, never got better. I'm sorry. It didn't get better. Yeah, I am sorry. I'm sorry to myself, too. And to everybody else that was rooting for me to hopefully just kick nicotine altogether. But one thing I can say is if I ever touch another cigarette, my wife is gonna hurt me in ways that I don't even imagine. But okay, let's get back to this thing. So we got on to, I think it was Tuesday of the following week. Yeah, no fun. Had a lot of problems all week long. My brain was completely scattered. I had a hard time putting together last week's weight loss video because my mind just was not there. I was so focused on uh, you know, either my vape or having some sort of nicotine calm those weird edgy twitches that I get once in a while where I just go completely off the deep end. I did the unthinkable. Yeah, I went out to the trash can. I dug this sucker out of the bottom of the trash can. I had to pick through the entire bag to find everything. My hands were covered in coffee grounds, like I said, uh, eggshells. It was just, it was gross. Thankfully, there was no dog poop in the bag or anything like that. You know, we, we do clean the litter box sometimes into that trash can or into the trash bag. This was spared. So when I pulled this out, this, this wasn't too bad. It wasn't too dirty. And, and everything else that I had, the main thing that was coating things was coffee grounds. Now, the nice thing about these vapes is we can take these things apart and I could clean them easily because these tanks all come apart. I can take everything out, wash it off in the sink, sterilize it. And the same thing goes for these things. I don't wash this out, but I, it is easy for me just to take it apart and clean it. And it didn't get too full of stuff. These batteries just pop right out of here and then I can put them on a charger later. So why did I go ahead and pull this out of the trash? Well, at that time I was scared. I was scared of my progress. I was scared of facing you guys. I was scared of being on camera and having to tell the truth about something like this. I mean, this is embarrassing to me. I mean, I'm sorry guys, this is this is embarrassing and this is a hard conversation for me to try to get through. But most of all, I was really scared about all the rumors and all the past experience I've had with quitting nicotine. Now I'm currently on a weight loss journey as you all know, or else you wouldn't be here watching this video. And I've been doing extremely well. I mean, I got people rooting for me all over the world. I mean, I got people in China, I got people in India, uh, United Kingdom, just everywhere. Southern Australia, places I've never even heard of on the map. That's amazing. I got them rooting for me. And yeah, they were rooting for me to quit smoking as well. Unfortunately, I failed. Now, 
Within that failure, I hope to be able to focus more, at least on making these videos, and I also hope to focus more on being able to uh, get these videos put out to everybody. Because when I'm creating videos and I'm sitting there at my desk, it's a lot of time put back and forth, and this helps. So in the downtime, yeah, there we go. Cures that right there. Uh, gives me time to focus on the next task because I have to do like 12 to 13 different tasks. Plus sometimes I have to do a lot of things around the house at the same time. And I have to do everything in order in order for things to fall together, if that makes any fun sense at all. So not wanting to go backwards like I did this week, where I went backwards like three point something pounds. Yeah, I went completely off the freaking rails. Uh, and Tuesday was the worst day of it all. That was the day that I pulled the freaking vape out of the trash and cleaned it off. I was a train wreck. And absolute train wreck. Me and my daughter sat here at the table. My son just got home from doing an event at his school. And he brought home this just platter. It was just full of chocolate chip cookies. Well, that is something I like to eat. And I just didn't care. I did, me and my daughter were just tearing up this plate of chocolate chip cookies. And I sat back and I realized... What am I doing to myself? I need to stop this now. And the only thing I could come up with to logically stop this right at the moment and in the healthiest way that I could, because it, it was spiraling downwards quickly in complete madness, was just to go outside, take the bullet, make the confession. Yeah, this is what I'm gonna be using to stay off of cigarettes for the duration of time. Uh, once I do get down to my goal weight, which is 200 and 35 pounds, that's my goal weight. I might go lower than that depending on how I feel at the time. But I want to get down small enough that I can ride my mountain bike next year because I have a mountain bike that's been sitting in there for a couple of years, sitting in the shed. It's been just packed around. It's been shoved in you know, random spots of homes and not really used. My son uses it right now to get back and forth to work until he gets his driver's license. And sometimes he just rides a skateboard to work because his work's just right around the corner. It's not that far away. But yeah, so he's using the bike. I hope to be able to get on that bike next summer and take you guys on some journeys around these amazing bike paths we have here in Anchorage. We have a ton. We have over 100 miles of bike paths that just go around the cities and go along the creeks and the streams. And it would just be so much fun to take you guys out and show you some things that you just don't normally get to see, especially from the vantage point of sitting here in my kitchen. So let's get back to the carnivore. Okay, carnivore has been hard for me. I have had some struggles with carnivore. Um, they're not a deal breaker type struggles, but these struggles I've been having are just having a hard time digesting food. That's been one of the hardest, hardest parts for me, but we're not gonna go that far off on the negatives of carnivore because man, there's a whole lot more positives I've been finding with carnivore. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm just going to refer to my notes because this is just, it's hard to keep track of all these things without having some notes handy. So let's see, Carnivore Pros, no more dandruff in my beard. Wow, that's a big one. Uh, in previous videos I made, especially in the first videos I made, I used, I used to love wearing black t-shirts because black t-shirts tend to cover a lot of the male features from a distance. So when you look at me, like when you look at me now in this black, you know, you can see, you can see the lines right here, the man boobs and stuff like that, just cause I got a really bright light over there. But if I were to shut that light off, you know, it would, it would kind of just help blend those in <clears throat> and you would, you wouldn't see it nearly as much. So I wear a lot of dark clothing. Now, I would like to change that. I would like to wear different style clothings. I, I'm thinking button down shirts and stuff like that. Uh, might be something in my near future. I do need to upgrade all of my work clothes because my work clothes are incredibly huge. Uh, one of my close friends and coworkers refers to my Carhartt bibs that I wear as gunny sacks. Now a gunny sack is, is kind of like an Alaskan term. People use like kind of like a burlap sack just to throw a bunch of crap in and food for storage and, and carry it home or back to wherever you need it. Um, but anyways, the dandruff. So yeah, I used to make these videos. I had black shirts on. And I mean, I'm pretty sure you can go back to like the first one where I'm just, I might be sitting in my pickup truck or could be sitting here at the kitchen table. But oh, it was just like snowflakes all down across my t-shirt. Now I can just scratch my chin. And I used to scratch my chin a lot, but I don't get near the amount of dandruff, if any at all. That's amazing. That's gone. Okay, that's directly related to carnivore because of all the meats and proteins and fats and stuff like that. So, okay, uh, let's see, what else do we got? Uh, my swelling of my feet, legs, and knees is almost completely gone. Now that is a key aspect to getting over 
the key stages of just starting to lose weight is getting your water weight under control, uh, getting your water intake up to where it needs to be so everything starts working properly and getting your metabolism kick-started. And that only took three days to get that going. So a, a three-day fast of absolutely no food, just water, vitamins, and your electrolytes, in my opinion, that's all you need to get started. Three days. That's easy, guys. That's the easiest part. It's going to seem like a mind bender and it's going to seem incredibly hard, but it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to get your metabolism going. And then as long as you just stay away from carbs and sugary foods for at least a month, those cravings are going to go away. You're not going to want the sugar in your coffee anymore. You're not going to feel like you have to have it. Um, you're not going to feel like you have to have bread or pizza made with traditional pizza dough, for instance, in my case, because that's my sin food, pizza. It's always been pizza. Yeah, the swelling on my feet and legs virtually disappeared. Now, the swelling in my knees was a problem at work because I drive around in a dump truck. I'm going in tight circles. We're doing 15 minutes this way, 15 minutes that way. My knees would be on fire, sometimes just after two rounds. And I would have to get out. And the only way to fix that was to get out and just stand up. And I could get out all my step and stand up. Now, if I got out, you know, to relieve myself at the bathroom, that would help because I'm walking a little bit, straightening my legs out. But just sitting there with my knees bent at an angle was extremely painful. So that pain has just about completely 100% gone away. And it only bothers me just a little bit right now. Um, now my feet aren't nearly as swollen and I do wear these construction boots. They're, they're slip on and they're made by Skechers. They're extremely comfortable. But when I first started this weight loss journey, I had already purchased these boots and I purchased them on Amazon. So when they arrived, I found out my feet did not fit them because they were too fat and they were too swollen. <sighs> yeah, that hurt because I also bought a pair of slip on shoes at the same time and those didn't fit on my feet either. So I had to wear special shoes made by Skechers just in order to uh, have anything on my feet for quite a while. Uh, or I had to wear a different type of lace up boots which were extremely uncomfortable because my, my swelling was going up and down right at that point. So that, that's gone, that's alleviated. I can wear just about whatever footwear I want right now. And uh, the wife's been slowly starting to uh, build up my arsenal of stuff like underwear and socks and stuff like that. That's a focus we're focused on here in the next week or two because all of my socks are stretched out. The tops of the socks, my calves were so big. Just the bottoms of my ankles were almost as big as my calf. And yeah, so it stretched out all the elastic and most of my socks. So a lot of my socks had to go in the trash. Um, yeah, when your feet are swollen, you get a lot of holes in the toes of your socks and stuff like that because your toes are swollen too. So that's a positive, so that stuff's going out. We're recycling that. We're gonna get some more comfortable clothes for me, hopefully really soon. Uh, the next thing, I can now slip on my work boots and walk around without pain. That's that's a huge thing. Yeah, back to the work boots. Um, I am 100% more active than I was when I first started this journey 20 weeks ago. Uh, I did do a video of where I was in my Jeep uh, trying to repair a transmission cable. I was actually trying to diagnose the problem for my wife. I was too fat to crawl under this Jeep. Now, granted, Jeeps aren't exactly sitting on the ground. This is a Jeep Wrangler. And I couldn't crawl under it. I had to go to a shop and borrow a, you know, a friend's jack and come home and lift it up just to figure out what the problem was. That was the end result of the video. Uh, you know, figuring out exactly what the problem was and figuring out if I could fix it myself. So I had to get it towed it off to... A repair shop and it was cost two or three hundred bucks and it's back home and working perfectly so but anyways yeah i've been a lot more active i've been working on her vehicle i've been working on my vehicles uh, more active around the house able to do things like the dishes and cooking and take care of the children when i actually am home when the children are here and so that's that's an improvement that's a vast improvement from months ago where i was basically a tub of lard just sitting around right here at this table and I'd be uh, going like this, playing video games on my phone, doing the whole, week. Yeah, just leave me alone, don't want to talk to nobody because I don't want to go anywhere, I don't want to do anything. And right now I actually want to do stuff. I want to get out of the house. Another positive of carnivore is I'm not tired throughout my workday. Uh, I used to crash around 
oh geez around 11 or 12 o'clock i'd be extremely tired like i couldn't get through the work day i'd be rubbing my eyes like this and it was just it hurt everything hurt i was extremely tired couldn't hardly keep my eyes open you know i also got sleep apnea on top of everything but once i got my cpap a lot of those issues resolved themselves and i started feeling much more rested but i was still crashing around 11 or 12. And that's because i was wrecking my morning coffee in most routines like uh, either here, I was adding in that, that garbage creamer that I tell people not to have. You know, the, the carnation, I think it is. I don't know. It was hazelnut. My favorite was hazelnut. It's full of a lot of stuff that, that we don't need. And it automatically shuts off any chances I had throughout the day of losing weight at that time. And if I could get over that, it took a lot of effort. So I just skip all that. I don't have to do nearly as much work to get the weight off now because... You know, I'm not slowing down the process in, in most cases. This week has just been, like I said, this week has been a train wreck. We're going to get back on track and get everything up and going for next week. And hopefully we can have some decent numbers next week. Because my next uh, biggest goal to get to right now is down below 300 pounds. Because once I get down below 300 pounds, that puts me at normal obese. So anything over 300 pounds for a guy my size, I'm about six foot two, and my age, I'm getting close to 50 years old. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but okay, back to where I was. That puts me, so anything over 300 pounds, that puts me right into uh, morbidly obese. Now, when I first found out that I was considered morbidly obese, it was kind of a shocker, and it shouldn't have been, because I was huge. And I found out at my, uh, when I looked over my medical report from my CPAP review, and right on the paperwork it said, patient is morbidly obese. That messed me up and that was that happened in uh i believe it was like late early 2020 i think was when i was diagnosed might have been later i'm not sure i'd have to go check a calendar but anyways that put me into a whole horrible thought process of you know just letting my depression get me overwhelmed with just extra thoughts and stuff like that like i felt like my life was ending and it wasn't pretty. I didn't want to feel like my life was ending anymore. That's why I started all of this. I wanted to get my life back. I wanted to live longer with my wife and children. And I think we all would like to get a little bit more life out of this short life that we have here. So this is why I got all this started. Okay, so there's another positive. Uh, now, I'm not doing great on carnivore. I've been having vegetable cravings and other type of food cravings. But I do have a decreased appetite. And when I do have cravings, they're sensible cravings. I crave vegetables or I crave some sorts of fruits. I'm not typically craving, like when I was trying to quit cigarettes this week, I'm not, I don't crave cookies. Now I do crave pizza, but when I look at a traditional pizza that comes out of any of these fast food places or even Costco, I just get that horrible feeling in my stomach like yeah we're not eating that no we're not even going to scrape the toppings off of that it's just not worth it so yeah we you know found a healthier style pizza and i'll stick with that that seems to be working that doesn't wreck it that doesn't make me feel like crap but it is super nice to say you know hey i lost a lot of weight getting rid of certain things in my life and it's not that big of a deal to get rid of certain things in your life. Now, it is a little inconvenient, especially when you like the hamburger buns or the, the bread for the sandwich, uh, pita pockets or, you know, burritos for that matter. That's an inconvenience because, you know, sometimes we're on the go and we like to be able to hold what we're eating. But when you get rid of the wrapper, you know, the burger buns and the tortilla shells and stuff like that, this whole process just goes. It goes fast. Once it starts working and once your system starts going, I noticed it just happens. And it happens without effort. Effort. Zero effort. I'm not running. I'm not jogging. I'm not doing anything. That's going to change. I'm going to start uh, consciously trying to get up in the morning and do a light workout routine. I do want to tighten up this chest area, uh, build up these shoulders a little bit, and work on these biceps. And I have a special technique on, on working these forearms right here. And that comes down to experience I had when I was a flat better because I was, I was rolling a lot of straps and you do this motion a lot and it, it really makes some nice forearms and you don't have to do a lot. Just toss that strap out 20 to 40 times and just roll it up. Just do that 20 to 40 times. And you can go buy those straps at 
at any auto parts store or something like that or uh, tractor supply warehouse or whatever you know just just trucking straps you don't throw the hook you hold the hook but you throw the other you throw the strap part out and you just continuously roll it up just do that and flatbedders do this stuff every day sometimes they roll up 100 to you know 150 straps a day depending on you know what kind of workload they have all right we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here um yeah another benefit of carnivore is i'm not necessarily losing weight but i'm losing a ton of inches so my clothes don't fit anymore they're, they're dangerously large and we're gonna have to uh upgrade my work apparel like next week i was hoping to do it today but i'm probably gonna put it off because some things came up i had to make a quick repair on the wife's jeep and get that repaired so that caught us uh cost us a little bit of money um let's see what else do we got here boy that's about it on my list huh i thought i had more written down i guess i don't have a whole lot more to talk about this week well i do and that's the hard part but i don't want to run these videos i don't want to make three hour videos for you guys because nobody wants to stick around for that i'm lucky to get uh the people to stick around for eight or nine minutes if i'm lucky so anyways if you guys could Go watch my cooking video because I'm making stuff over here in the crock pot. That over there, that's got something in there. That video is going to be up real soon. And I do have a way to clean cast iron that I put up. And also the pot that I used for uh, cooking my bacon. I got really simple, goofy. Oh, it's time to go work on the time to go work on the crock pot recipe. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and please comment down below. That's the most important part of this process for me is being able to respond, listen to, and read every single one of your comments. Everybody here is important to me and I try to get back to you as quick as possible. Doesn't matter what we're talking about, good or bad, sideways, doesn't matter. We can talk about anything. It doesn't have to be strictly carnivore. It could be anything in the world. Like, hey, what's the weather like in Alaska? I am game to talk about most anything whenever I have time. So, until next time, guys. Oh, it's